Welcome to Link G4X Training Part 29. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at working with our idle control and looking at how to work with an idle stepper motor. We're going to find in our last video, we reviewed our basic idle control where we had our throttle plate opening a fixed amount, allowing a certain amount of airflow into the engine using our ignition timing feedback to regulate our engine torque. Now we're going to be introducing working with an idle control solenoid, and again in particular, a stepper control solenoid, and learn how to program it within our PC Link software so we can vary the amount of airflow coming into our engine so that can change our engine torque as the engine is idling and can get us to our desired programmed idle RPM. We're going to have a lot of things to cover here in this video, so let's jump in so we can check out how to work with our idle control. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our idle control tuning in our Link G4X systems. Now in our last training tutorial, we reviewed how to work with our basic idle control that was using our spark timing feedback to dynamically control the engine's torque to hit our desired idle speed. So that's also assuming that we had our throttle plate open on our throttle body, a certain fixed amount, and we weren't using an idle control solenoid to bring additional airflow into the engine. Now in this video, we're gonna to start to introduce the concept of working with our idle control solenoids, and we're specifically gonna take a look at working with our idle stepper motor. Now there's two different choices for working with our idle control motors. So there's a stepper motor and a pulse width modulated style solenoid. It's gonna be the difference of two different kinds of idle control motors, and there's gonna be slight differences in implementation here in the software as far as controlling the different types of solenoids. Some of the programming language is a little bit different, so I'm breaking apart all these idle control videos into separate segments so that you can watch one specific to your application. So an engine that's going to have an idle stepper motor from the factory would be a 2JZ engine or a 4G63 engine, whether you're dealing with a 1G or 2G Eclipse, or even Evo 8 or Evo 9 applications. Those are all examples of a stepper motor. Uh, pulse width modulated style motor is gonna be found on a lot of Honda applications. Uh, there wasn't any, any stepper motor ever used, as far as my knowledge, on any Honda motor. So if you're dealing with a BDH series engine, a K series engine, a C series NSX engine, an F series S2000 engine, you're gonna find those are all a pulse width modulated style solenoid. So there's gonna be a difference in control, but ultimately we're trying to achieve the same thing. Um, it's gonna be regulating the amount of airflow coming into the engine to produce more or less engine torque. So we've talked about in the last video, the relationship between our airflow and our spark timing and engine torque reduction. So in the case where we're dealing with our basic idle control, we had a certain amount of airflow fixed from our throttle plate opening. And then we were varying the spark timing to vary the amount of engine torque to hit our desired idle RPM that we were commanding here in our idle target RPM table. Now, when we're dealing with an idle control motor, we're able to implement our spark timing idle control if we'd like, we can omit that or we can use it. And we're going to have our idle stepper motor in this case, if we're talking about spe stepper specific tutorial here, um, moving more or less airflow into the engine through that stepper motor itself. So you can think of this um, in the previous example where we had that basic idle control, our throttle plate was fixed, but we were moving our throttle plate open more to achieve more airflow to hit the desired idle RPM we wanted to be at, and then using our spark timing to vary the engine torque. In this example, we're gonna be moving the amount of airflow, moving more or less airflow to achieve more or less torque out of the engine, and then being able to hit that desired idle RPM. So there's gonna be a couple different ways we can implement the, the control aspect with our idle stepper motor. There's gonna be a way that we can use it to essentially feed airflow in to achieve that desired idle RPM, whether it's hot or cold, or we can treat just using the idle stepper motor in order to have assisting our cold start and then actually going in and essentially almost bypassing it once the engine gets up to operating temperature by having a fixed amount of throttle plate opening. Now that's usually the latter is usually what I'm going to be working with on most race applications, but we'll go through both here and just understanding how to program and work with an idle stepper motor. So let's go through here. We're gonna to go to the top under idle speed control setup, and we have our idle ignition control. Now I'm gonna leave it off for right now. We did talk about that again in the past video. We know that box pops up down here, and we have that dynamic spark timing feedback that we were seeing here. Our ignition angle is what's coming from our spark timing table, and then our idle ignition angle would be what comes from the idle ignition control. In this case, you'll see it's zero because I'm gonna leave it off for right now. Now we do find other statuses here. If we're looking in our live data, we find that we do have our idle target RPM. We have our idle position. We have our idle target error. That's the calculated difference between our actual RPM and the target we're looking at. We'll see our idle status if it's on or off. Um, the idle position, that's gonna be how much 
of the airflow is contributing through the idle stepper motor in this case. So it's going to be in a scale between 0 to 100. And then we're going to find we have other things that we can see on screen here. Uh, taking a look at something like our power steering switch, engine fan output, AC status, um, even our vehicle speed. These are all going to play roles in how the idle controls implement it, which we're going to get into in a lot of these program details here. So let's go into our mode. We're going to go from off and we have some choices here. So we have an open loop and a closed loop option. Now when we're getting started with our idle control and we have no idea where the table is going to be adjusted at, um, we want to simplify the control routine. So what we want to do here is select open loop to begin. So I'm going to go here and thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel. So make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.